In the previous video, I reviewed the basic techniques for computing the limit of a function at a point. In this video, I want to address how to compute the limit of a function as x approaches plus or minus infinity. All my examples will be at infinity, but minus infinity behaves the same way. The method works for any rational function, a quotient of polynomials, and a few others. And it is based on two limits. First, the limit as x approaches infinity of x is infinity, and second, the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x is 0. And just knowing these two, with a bit of algebra and the limit laws, we can compute the limit of any rational function. Let's begin with a polynomial. I want to compute the limit as x approaches infinity of this polynomial. If I look at the terms separately, well, it looks like this part is approaching infinity as x goes to infinity, and this one will be negative, will go to minus infinity. So how do they balance? The rule is that for a polynomial, as x approaches infinity, only the term with the largest exponent matters. But the justification for this is as follows. I can always factor out the biggest power. This is what happens if I factor out x cubed. And now, once I've done that, I notice that this term, 1 over x, approaches 0 as x goes to infinity, and this term also approaches 0 as x goes to infinity. So in practice, I have something that goes to 2 times x cubed, and the limit of this is simply infinity. So to calculate the limit of a polynomial, look only at the term with the biggest exponent, and if you need to justify y, this is the reason. We can use the same idea to compute the limit as x approaches infinity of a quotient of polynomial, a rational function. And here is an example. Like before, I'm going to say that at the top and at the bottom, the only term that matters is the one with the biggest power. Why? Well, the justification is the same as before. I can factor out the term with the biggest exponent. At the top is x squared, and at the bottom, in this case, is also x squared. And in this case, I can cancel those two powers. And now I am left with a bunch of terms that, as x approaches infinity, all go to zero. So they don't matter for the limit, and the limit ends up being simply 2 over 3. Thus justifying that to calculate the limit of a quotient of polynomials like this, I only need to look at the biggest term, both at the numerator and the denominator. I can extend the same ideas even to other functions. For example, the limit as x goes to infinity of this function. This is a quotient of sums of polynomials and roots of polynomials, but I'm going to treat it the same way. I'm looking for the term with the biggest exponent at both the top and the bottom, but careful with the square root. At the top, I notice here that I have x squared, but I also have a term that is x to the fourth inside the square root, and I think of that as x squared as well. Whereas at the bottom, I only have x and the square root of x to the fourth, which is x squared. So I think the largest terms are this x to the fourth inside the root, this x squared, and also this x to the fourth. But I don't have to guess. I'm going to go through the same process in the previous two problems to justify that what I'm doing is actually rigorous and works, and not just a bad idea. I need to factor out the biggest term. I'm going to do this one slowly, because it's the first one, and I'm going to start by factoring out the term inside the square root. The biggest power inside the square root is x to the fourth. And the same thing happens at the bottom. Now, the square root of a product is the product of square roots, and the square root of x to the fourth is simply x squared. And now it seems clear, x squared is the biggest term. So I'm going to factor x squared both at the top and at the bottom. And finally, I can cancel the x, x squared at both terms, and I'm left with a bunch of things that go to zero. The only things that don't go to zero are these three terms. So this limit is equal to one, plus 1 over root 2, which is also equal to root 2, thus confirming that the only terms that matter were this thing. But I didn't have to guess. This is a proper justification. 